You're watching InfoSec Bytes, a crash course in information security for journalists. We're based at the Center for Investigative Journalism in London and supported by the Logan Foundation. This is an introduction to Signal Private Messenger from Open Whisper Systems, a smartphone app that lets you chat and make calls with end-to-end -end encryption. This video is provided for information only. It cannot replace the advice of a trained security professional. If lives or safety depend on your security, please seek the advice of an expert. So, surveillance has been in the news a lot over the last few years, and if you've been keeping up with that news, you may have thought to yourself, maybe I should start using encryption. And you may have avoided doing so, thinking that encryption is difficult or highly technical. We're here to tell you it's not. If you own a smartphone, you can start using encryption right away, and you can do so by starting to use Signal. Signal won't protect you in all situations, but it's definitely an improvement on using SMS or normal phone calls. And once you've started, you can take other steps to improve your situation further. This is a video about what Signal is, how it uses something called end-to-end -end encryption, and how it compares to other secure messaging apps on the smartphone software market. In the next couple of videos, we'll also be showing you how to install and use Signal on your iPhone or on your Android smartphone. If you want to skip to those tutorials, click on the pop-up message and then choose a video. But if you'd like to find out more about Signal and end-to-end -end encryption, keep watching. Signal, from Open Whisper Systems, is a familiar concept a smartphone messaging app which can also make calls. If you use WhatsApp, you already know pretty much what to expect with Signal. Give or take a few features, Signal does everything WhatsApp does. The main attraction of Signal is that it uses a specific type of encryption, which is called end-to-end -end encryption. End-to-end -end encryption aims to protect your communications not only from malicious hackers or spying governments, but also service providers like your ISP or your chat service. Basically, end-to-end -end means the communication is encrypted from one end to the other end, and nobody in between has access. When you send a message, it first has to go into and pass through the cloud, and here the cloud means the computers or servers of the service provider you are using and then it is forwarded on and leaves the cloud bound for your contact. With end-to-end -end encryption, when you send the message, it is encrypted on your device. It passes through the cloud completely encrypted, and then it is and only can be decrypted on the device it is sent to. Many other apps use what's called client-server encryption which means that the message is encrypted on your device and then it is decrypted in the cloud. And then it is encrypted again as it leaves the cloud and then decrypted again when it arrives at your contact's device. And it's worse than that because the message doesn't just pass through the cloud. Normally a log of every message you ever send stays there forever. So as you can see, if you're using client-server encryption, whoever is in charge of the cloud service can read your messages. And not only that, but a hacker or an intelligence agency could hack the cloud, and then they'd have your messages. Or a government agency could use the law to coerce a service provider to hand over all of your messages. And you probably don't want that. But if you use end-to-end -end encryption, none of that can happen, because even though the message passes through the cloud, it cannot be read. And so all anyone sees is undecipherable code. Signal was one of the first apps to take end-to-end -end encryption seriously on smartphones. While other companies were happy to say, use our service and in return we can read your messages and serve you ads based on them, Whisper Systems said, our app uses encryption so that even we cannot read your messages. Signal might have been among the first, but it is no longer the only secure messaging app available. When Edward Snowden revealed the realities of mass surveillance in 2013, it created a huge market opportunity for encrypted messaging apps. And suddenly, smartphone app stores exploded with hundreds of new apps, all claiming to protect your messages. Likewise, public demand for strong encryption began to put pressure on major internet companies, and they began to respond. In 2016, WhatsApp, 
Google's Allo and Facebook Messenger all took Signal's encryption protocol, which is the part of Signal that does the encryption, and integrated it into their own apps. This means that if you use these apps, you are also using some of Signal's code. However, this doesn't mean these apps are just as good as Signal. All of them are still owned by companies who have a commercial incentive to capitalize on your private information. Facebook Messenger and Allo don't even have encryption turned on by default, and all three reserve the right to gather other information about you, whereas Signal is designed to collect as little information about you as possible. So if you care about privacy, you should still use Signal instead of WhatsApp. You should also be careful taking claims to security and privacy at face value. Many of the hundreds of apps on smartphone app stores which claim to encrypt your messages are fake and are using the word encryption as nothing more than marketing. They may not encrypt your messages, or if they do, they may not do it properly or securely. Don't just trust any old app on your app store that claims to do encryption, especially if it's obscure or unheard of and you can't find any documentation online. On the other hand, there are also many and increasingly more legitimate apps which do offer encryption and which are in competition with Signal. These include Wire, Threema, Silent Circle, Riot, Wicker, Silence, Telegram, Viber, and so on. You may have heard of some of these or been recommended them by your colleagues. All of these applications have different approaches to how they encrypt your messages and calls, and they have different features and capabilities. Many apps use encryption, but what counts is the way they use encryption. Some of them are very promising and approach privacy and security commendably, but are quite new and therefore less mature than Signal. Others, like Silent Circle, are well-designed and well-respected, but there is a charge to use them, whereas Signal is free. Others are closed source, meaning the programming code isn't made public, and therefore difficult to examine. Others still make odd decisions about how they use encryption, which raise questions over how much they can be trusted. It's hard to make sense of all of this, especially when there's a lot of marketing involved. If you would like to compare some of these apps with Signal and investigate their merits relative to one another, some organizations, like the Electronic Frontier Foundation, have made efforts to list their features and assign them scores on privacy and security. We've included the links to these scorecard sites in the description below. We've chosen Signal for this tutorial because it scores very well in these comparisons. Some of our reasons include Signal has been around for a long time, is under active development, and enjoys the confidence of many people within the information security community. The way Signal is designed represents the best balance of features to provide maximum privacy at the same time as ease of use. Signal's code is all open source, meaning anyone can examine the code to see if it does what it's supposed to do, whereas for other apps, such as Telegram or Threema, none or only a part of the code is open source. Signal uses end-to-end -end encryption by default whereas some other apps, like Telegram, only offer end-to-end -end encryption as an option. And if you don't select it, all messages are only encrypted using client-server encryption. And Signal is not just a smartphone app. You might get tired of constantly typing on a screen keyboard, or desire the ability to use Signal while using your laptop or desktop computer. Well, this is actually possible. Signal is also a desktop app, which runs as an add-on to the Chrome browser available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. The app is also developed by Whisper Systems. With the desktop Signal app, your phone is still the main device that you register with Signal, and you then enable the desktop app from your phone, which gives it access to your messages. Once you've done this, you can type away using Signal on the desktop computer. Our tutorials don't cover the desktop tutorial app, and instead focus on the main smartphone app, but keep an eye out for InfoSec Byte's tutorials on the desktop option in future. All of this said, Signal is not perfect, and users should be aware of its limitations. For instance, Signal uses what's called a centralized server architecture. All of the servers that the app uses are owned and controlled by Open Whisper systems, rather than decentralized or federated, where anyone with technical know-how can create a server. 
Some people prefer a decentralized architecture because it means there is not a single point of failure. But Whisper Systems argue that the centralized model ensures that Signal can be more efficient, updated faster, and more easily provide a service to a massive user base. So it's a trade-off. Signal uses data and Wi-Fi only. In order to send and receive messages, you need to be using data or connected to a Wi-Fi network. This also means that if you send a message to a contact and they don't have data on, or a Wi-Fi connection, then the message will not be delivered until they do. Another caveat is that Signal uses your telephone number as its identifier. When you sign up to use Signal, you must register using your phone number. This means that everyone you communicate with on Signal has your phone number. Whereas this may be fine for the general user, there may be some situations in your work as a journalist where you wish to communicate securely with somebody without giving away your phone number. Furthermore, when you sign up to Signal in order to connect with your other contacts who have Signal, the app must upload the list of phone numbers in your contacts to Open Whisper Systems servers. Efforts are made to protect your privacy while doing this by obfuscating the phone numbers using what's called cryptographic hash functions and deleting the list once connections are made. But there are limitations to this method and ultimately using Signal means you must trust Open Whisper Systems a bit. Another potential issue is that when you install Signal, at least in current versions, the app, without asking you, sends automatic notifications to anyone else who has your phone number and also uses Signal. You may not want the app to do this, for instance, if you do not trust everyone who has your phone number. And finally, Signal is, of course, a smartphone application, which means that your end point is a smartphone. It's important to understand the security limitations of a smartphone if you're going to use it for private communications. Signal does end-to-end -end encryption pretty well, but if someone gains access to your smartphone, or if someone manages to hack your smartphone, then Signal can't really help you. These are not entirely theoretical possibilities. For instance, smartphones are normally the first thing confiscated if you're ever arrested. There's also an international market in hardware and software sold to police forces, intelligence agencies, and even shadier buyers across the world, designed to let someone hack into your device and exfiltrate data from it, or to turn on your microphone or camera and spy on you. If your investigation might spike the interest of someone with these capabilities, you must consider the risk your smartphone presents, and perhaps don't rely exclusively on signal. Another issue is that even though Google and Apple do a lot of work trying to keep Android and iOS secure from these kinds of viruses and exploits, Apple definitely has the lead in this. This is because all iPhones are updated directly by Apple, within hours of a new security update, whereas most Android smartphones have a custom version of Android made by the phone manufacturer. Even though Google creates timely patches and security updates, Android users rely on their phone manufacturer to push those updates to their phones. Sometimes it takes months, and sometimes they just don't bother at all. As a result, the Android security ecosystem is inferior to that of iOS. Besides smartphone security, you must also consider smartphone privacy. Neither Android nor iOS are designed for maximum privacy. For instance, your Android smartphone is linked to your Google account and by default sends lots of information about you to Google, such as your location, your usage habits, even the Wi-Fi networks in your area. Your iPhone also sends home information about you. Anyone with access to this store of data, such as government agencies with valid warrants, can deduce a lot of information about your movements, who you associate with, and what you do. Depending on what kind of work you are doing, this might not be ideal for you. Smartphones are also phones and the underlying infrastructure is the terrestrial cell phone network, which is, again, not designed with privacy in mind. Using a cell phone gives away lots of information about you to service providers, such as your rough location. This information is also available to police departments, which often possess special equipment designed to track you using your mobile phone. If you want to stay anonymous, it's very difficult to do using a cell phone. This tutorial is provided to show how to communicate privately by using Signal Private Messenger, but Signal doesn't protect you from the wider risks of using smartphones. It's good for generally keeping your messages private, but if you're a journalist working with sensitive sources, 
your personal or work-issued smartphone may not be the best place to conduct conversations with them. You may want to look into operating a separate phone, or avoid using a smartphone entirely and instead using a laptop computer with a special operating system that has been designed with security and privacy in mind, such as Tails, or Cubes, or Subgraph. Keep an eye out for InfoSec Bytes videos about these options in future. All of this having been said, Signal really is an excellent piece of software, and it is improving all the time. It's easy to install and really intuitive to use, so if you haven't used it before, we recommend you get using it right away. In the next couple of videos, we're going to show you how to do exactly that, on iPhone and Android smartphones. So to watch those videos, click on the pop-up message now, and then choose the video for your phone. Thanks for watching InfoSec Bytes. If you found this video useful, please share it widely with your colleagues and coworkers. To support the Center for Investigative Journalism with a donation, please visit tcij.org forward slash donate. And if you would like to watch our other videos, please go to infosecbytes.org or subscribe to our channel below.